Good afternoon to all of you. I'm Fred Kaplan. I'm the president of the Time Machine uh, organization. It's really a pleasure to be with you for this virtual conference. I'm going to speak a bit about um, the Time Machine. It's a scientific adventure that started several years ago and which is continuing um, for the year to come uh, with a very exciting ambition, which is to build the first 4D mirror world. Let me maybe illustrate the idea with a particular example. Um, you see this image of Venice. It represents Venice in 1808. Uh, it may look like a normal uh, 3D render uh, of a virtual world, but there's one big difference, is that that model has been entirely generated in an automatic manner based on historical record. Um, what you see here is not uh, one artist, which has come and make some modeling of each of the pieces. It's a fully procedural process, which starts from historical data and try as much as it can to uh, reconstruct a reality of the past, or at least a possible reality of the past. So how does it work? Well, uh, you have here one of the most precious uh, assets for us, which is uh, this uh, historical canister. It's called the Napoleonic canister. Uh, it was built in, uh, in Venice and uh, designed in Venice uh, by the um, French uh, administration uh, in 1808. Um, and it actually represents um, exactly the state of the city, both from a geometrical um, point of view, but uh, also um, describing all the inhabitants of the city at that particular moment. And the thing which is interesting is that for several years, we've been designing algorithms which are capable of extracting directly information from this cadastre. The idea is that you have now machine vision algorithms which are capable of uh, not only um, decomposing, segmenting the image in the various parcels, um, but also um, understanding their geometry and possibly also reading the different numbers you are seeing in these um, various parcels. And that permits uh, to get form of uh, automatic map of Venice and the 1808 and to connect that map to uh, other um, databases. I mean, in that moment, there were registered with, uh, registers with um, various uh, names of people which were living in the various places. Uh, so in one shot, you get a full representation um, of the city. And this is how, um, through various research, we've been, by combining these different historical information, capable of progressively getting a form of information skeleton, which is describing for each parcel of the city um, the evolution of um, the cityscape. Uh, having some particular event like fires, having some particular uh, event like destruction, reconstructions, and playing like a gigantic uh, four-dimensional film, uh, which is uh, summing up uh, all the information we have about uh, the city evolution um, in time. So this is, of course, not a definitive uh, database. It is a continuously evolving database. It's something which is per uh, which is revised uh, by, uh, by historians, uh, which is confronted with new historical data, but that serve as a kind of skeleton in which you can, uh, on which you can attack various type of, uh, of information. So how, how does it look? For instance, uh, um, there's here um, an interface which permits to compare the document uh, on the right here, the Napoleonic cadastre, and the basic uh, extrusion which was made out of this cadastre. And you can um, change uh, here with a slider uh, the date in time, uh, compare with different other type of sources here, the satellite imagery, and see how uh, the uh, map is actually uh, adapted to that particular uh, setting. The thing which is interesting is that, of course, uh, all these technologies are extremely uh, generic and they can be used at different scales with a different type of sources. And one of the idea of Time Machine is precisely to scale up in that, uh, in that direction. Uh, here, of course, you get only a uh, part of the information, which are the geometric information at a given moment. Uh, it's very important that you combine this with all the visual evidence that are existing uh, concerning that particular places. And here again, uh, you end up with uh, a possibility for machine to help us in that task actually by clustering automatically the uh, hundreds of thousands of images there are about Venice in various uh, small clusters which are corresponding to the different places. So some are describing very famous 
uh, landscapes and very famous uh, uh, views of the city. But others, of course, are dealing with uh, particular, maybe less lesser known uh, elements. And so you end up progressively accumulating this visual evidence and you will have to connect this visual evidence on the one hand with the 2D um, geometry of the city and the corresponding structure, but also with the 3D remaining um, elements which are currently uh, present um, in Venice. And so for doing this, um, one challenge is of course to be capable of building a very large scale uh, 3D model of uh, of the city, uh, but one maybe even more difficult challenge is to be able to store them and uh, accumulate progressively in space and time a very dense representation in terms of cloud points of um, a city like Venice. And what you have in that particular video is a demonstration of the of the time machine server, which actually has this possibility of working, you know, like like tiles, but it's not. 2D tiles, it's, it's 3D tiles or 4D tiles, even if we want to, to include the time dimension, and it's loading um, information on 3D models, which are corresponding to the different scale in which you are, uh, in which you are looking uh, at a given moment. So here we are been moving from a very large uh, view of uh, the entire country of Italy and zooming here a drone-based uh, model which is good at a given resolution, but as you actually you're scaling up on one particular uh, part of the city, you have to load another model, which is, uh, in, a, in a case like this one, uh, a model which was done with photogrammetry uh, directly on a particular um, uh, place uh, in Venice, San, San Giacomo Square here. So the possibility of, of scaling down, I mean, from the very big representational city to the very small representation of city is extremely interesting because it permits uh, really to progressively build a densify, a densify a model uh, of uh, the uh, present reality. And the key idea when you reach that element is to be capable of linking everything together. So here, uh, I'm showing you an example where we start from a model of 2016 of the city of Venice. I mean, we move from photos uh, uh, directly uh, concerning these images then uh, we are uh, progressively uh, adjusting to the cloud point. The cloud point is also aligned with ancient representation uh, of the city, which is aligned with different uh, 3D model, which were made for based on the hypothetical idea, which is aligned always with the 3D model of the print, which is aligned with uh, the uh, model of the 1808 uh, uh, Napoleonic catastrophes. And using uh, various other techniques, we can then link the information you have for in parcel 9006 with the name of Francesco Raspi. Here again, these are names which are automatically deciphered by uh, and written uh, recognition. And uh, linking that particular Francesco Raspi with another Francesco Raspi, which happened to live in Venice in 1740. In 1740, we have another model, which is slightly less uh, precise, but like a giant Sudoku progressively. I mean, these different uh, view of the city are uh, connected with one another and uh, progressively densify uh, the representation of the past we have of the city. Um, so this is the general idea shown on one example. It's the idea of the mirror world, I mean, the idea that you have now for each city, a model, which is a 3D model, a kind of double uh, of that particular city, that that model as any computer science model is tagged, attached with various type of information. It's not just a static model, but more importantly for us, that that model is a 4D model. That means that you don't just have the current state of the city. In fact, that has no sense to have the current state of the city because the city is always evolving in the future and uh, have been evolving from various states uh, in the past. And so you build a single model which is connecting both this historical information with also the information that will happen in the future concerning the city. And that particular 4D model is what we call a local time machine. A local time machine is a group of um, entrepreneurs, uh, academics, uh, people working in the political areas, which are deciding to join together to densify uh, the past of a particular city and building a model like this one. 
And what the time machine organization do is try to help each of these uh, local projects to benefit from all the progress which are made uh, uh, across Europe and across the world, and, in, and, and very fastly also to circulate all the evolution which are made in each of the local time machine. Um, so it's, it's a way of sharing information, it's a way of sort of standardizing the tools so that progressively a tool which was made in Venice, in Amsterdam, in Antwerp, in Paris can be used in another city when they start actually to work on a particular, on a particular model. So the time machine uh, organization is uh, structured uh, in a way uh, which permits also uh, for the local time machine to uh, make a more rapid connection with the various applications that can be done if you have such a 4D model. I mean, of course, for scholars that want to study the city, but also for uh, city planners, also, of course, for all the creative industries, uh, games, uh, for instance, but not only, also tourism, and, and uh, all the uh, future uh, imagina imaginative ideas we may have on how to deal with that particular mirror world. Um, the time machine is regrouping also all the research uh, which is currently done at the European scale uh, for uh, scanning more efficiently, uh, for uh, using various artificial intelligence techniques to be more efficient, uh, for extracting uh, information and for experiencing information in an immersive way uh, through the various way we're going to relate with these uh, for the world informations. Uh, you can go on timemachine.eu, we'll see in real time the various projects which are popping up, focusing on small uh, aspects of each uh, uh, of, this, of this bigger problem, but actually progressively densifying city by city all the information we have um, concerning that particular city. It's the idea of the mirror world, which was uh, described by Kevin Kelly uh, uh, two years ago, essentially. I mean, it's an important idea. Uh, the idea that we had different type of platforms. The web was the first one. The social media may have been the second one, but actually the third platform is something which is completely transforming our future relation to information. The mirror world is something as important as was the web or as, were important the social media, and maybe one hope is that that third, pass, that third platform will be this time maybe a European one. So if you want more information, uh, don't hesitate to actually go on timemachine.eu, uh, and it's a pleasure for me uh, to interact with you uh, about this project. All the best. Bye bye.